the time for the hour to take place has drawn very near. The Prophet وسلم, said, I was sent this close to the advent of the hour and he joined his pointer and the middle finger. Allah Azza wa Jal says, اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون The time for people's account has drawn nearer while they heedlessly turn away from its signs. And out of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal that he is going to prepare people to receive the hour by sending signs indicating its advent. And the Prophet وسلم, in many narrations clarified the different signs that will take place prior to the arrival of that moment of the hour in order to warn his people to prepare them to receive that play that event because it is the most serious matter that will take place it is the most dangerous and terrible thing that will happen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't leave anything without clarification because he was divinely supported. The matter of the hour is so serious that it had to be detailed for people's preparation. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqoo rabbakum inna zalzalata saati shay'un azim O people, fear your Lord! For the shaking of the hour is indeed a very terrible matter. And one of the most important of all the signs, and it is the first as Ibn Hajar, may Allah have mercy on him, stated, it is the first of all the major signs, the occurrence of which will denote the beginning of the change that will take place on earth. It is the advent of At-Dajjal. In the book of an Imam Muslim, the Prophet wasallam said, the hour will not take place until you see Ten signs prior to that, and then he mentioned one of them to be a Dajjal. And he himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the one who told us that it is the most serious, dangerous, terrible matter that will take place. He said, from the time of crea the creation of Adam, until the advent of the hour, there is nothing more serious, more terrible, than a Dajjal. Again reported by Muslim. So the advent of a Dajjal is the first serious matter, the first major sign. And because it is so serious and so scary, no prophet, there was no prophet except that he had warned his people against a Dajjal. As the Prophet ﷺ informed us, and this is reported by Al Imam Muslim as well. The advent of a Dajjal, in order for us to be prepared for it, we had to know a few things. Signs indicating the closeness of his appearance. 
how would things look like prior to his advent? Well, people will be far from the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Faith and commitment to faith will weaken. Sins will prevail. Things like riba, well riba is everywhere. Even next to sacred places, you still have banks. Zina, it's everywhere. Alcohol is everywhere. Music, people fight with you when you say it is haram. Not only listening to it, but there are, they are so argumentative when it comes to this issue. Enjoining good and forbidding evil almost disappears. Shameless and low people become daring and speak out about their deviance and immorality openly. This is something that's scary because we actually see this to be the situation of the Ummah now. And in order for people to recognize at the Jal, when he comes, the Prophet ﷺ gave us descriptions of this man. Of this human being and this is the first thing he is a human being he is a man the Prophet وسلم, said and this is reported by Abu Dawood and classified as authentic by an Albani he said he is short and bow-legged and he said and this is in Muslim he is a young man who is bulky in features, red complexion, very curly hair, with his right eye being blind and sticking out. And on his left eye, where the tear bud is, is a thick layer of skin, all of which indicates his ugliness and deformation in, in shape. And one of the most important descriptions given by the Prophet ﷺ is the following. And this is reported by an Imam Muslim as well. He ﷺ said, on his forehead, the word kafir, are written on his forehead and every believer will be able to read it whether he is learned or unlearned whether he knows how to read and write or he does not or she does not regardless of the language every believer will be able to read this on his forehead And this is to make matters easier for people to recognize this evil and protect themselves against him. Now once he appears, how long does he stay? How long is this trial going to last? The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by an Imam Muslim, he said, he will stay, once he appears, he will stay for 40 days. And then he detailed. He said, the first day is as long as a year. The second day is as long as a month. The third day is as long as a week. And the remaining days are regular days. So we're talking about 14 months and few days. Something to that effect. Now, 
I want you to pay attention to the following dialogue between the uh, companions and the Prophet. When he said that, please be very attentive to the following. The companions immediately asked the following, would it be sufficient for us in these first three days to pray the normal day, five daily prayers, meaning five times only? He said, no. He said, no. Estimate it and pray five prayers as if it's a full year, like you do in a full year, and then like you do in a full month, and then like you do in a full week. This is the meaning of his saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, why did I want you to pay attention to this? Do you not notice that they did not even question the matter of the length of a day? They immediately took that for granted, accepted it as the truth, and that it will happen, and their main concern was how to fulfill their obligation regarding Salah. Nowadays, you would have someone saying, how could this be possible? The sun has an orbit which it goes in, so how can a full year be a day, or a day can be a full year? This scientifically in physics doesn't make sense and therefore I do not accept it. Just like some have rejected Ya'juj and Ma'juj because physics says it doesn't happen, it cannot happen. Modern science rejects that because how can they exist now, which is the belief of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah, and we still don't know where they're at. Though, these, these narrations talking about Ya'juj and Ma'juj are authentic narrations. So how can you argue that? And before that you had people rejecting and refusing to accept the narration of the fly. The Prophet Wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari. He said, if a fly drops in, in your plate, dip it and then throw it away. Some said, this is disgusting. It is impossible that the Prophet ﷺ said this. And therefore we reject this narration, though it is in Al-Bukhari. We don't care. We will reject it. My mind doesn't accept it. And this is where deviation starts. When you start judging divine text by your ration and your mind and your perception. That's when deviation takes place. The companions were not like that. And that's why they were deserving of radiallahu anhum wa radu an. Allah was pleased with them and they with Him. Let's compare ourselves to them. If we want to come close to their rank, let's act like they acted. The trials of the Dajjal are very dangerous. Allah Azza wa Jal gave him certain abilities, super abilities in order to test people. So the truthful will be distinguished from those who lie those who are firm and steadfast will be distinguished from those who are doubtful and worship Allah as Allah Azza wa says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ They're upon an edge and it depends on who's winning, they will go with the stream. And that will distinguish people, tests distinguish people. Amongst these trying abilities, dangerous ones, is that he will command the sky and it will drop rain. And this is reported in Muslim. And he will command the earth and it will bring out plantation and fruits. This is also recorded in Muslim. 
and he can bring back to life the dead. And this is also reported by Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, he will call a young man, full of youth, strong, powerful, and then will strike him, split him into two halves, killing him. And then in one of the narrations, he would walk between the two halves. And then he will call him, he will come back to life. Full of energy. You see how dangerous these are. And that is why the first instruction given by the Prophet وسلم, as protection against the Dajjal, which is the last point or the last section protection against him, the first instruction given by the Prophet ﷺ to us, and this is reported by Abu Dawood and classified as authentic by Al-Albani, he said, if he should appear, run away from him. For by Allah, a man would believe, would think that he is strong in faith, and as soon as he reaches him, he would follow him. Follow the instructions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They safeguard you against evil. And this is the worst evil that will take place prior to the hour. He said, if you hear of him, don't get near, run away. There is no doubt that one of the most important means of protection against any evil and particularly about this serious evil is one's commitment to his religion. We need to be committed, serious about our faith. We need to learn our faith. We need to know our Lord, His names and qualities, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the uh, means of protection as stated by the Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Muslim. He said, if he should appear and you happen to be next to him or around him, then recite Surah Al-Kahf, the opening of Surah Al-Kahf. Another narration says, Whoever memorizes the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf will be protected from Ad-Dajjal. Supplicating Allah Azza wa Jal is a very powerful tool to achieve anything, to attain anything. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal a lot. As a matter of fact, abundantly every day to protect him from the trials of Ad-Dajjal. In the book of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, the Prophet Aisha describes that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha and others, used to say, after the tashahud, prior to concluding with Salam, used to supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal, asking him refuge from four things. He would ask Allah Azza wa Jal refuge from the punishment of hell, the punishment of the grave, the trials of life and death, and the trials of Ad-Dajjal. And in another narration, he would say that after he concluded the Salah. And he would instruct people and teach them to supplicate. Uzu billahi. Ask Allah's refuge from, and then he would teach them. Now we don't know how close is this event, but enough to indicate and signify its nearness 
is the saying of the, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to the companions. If he should show up whilst I am with you, then I'll protect you against him. Let's stop here and not continue with the narration. This is enough seriousness. The Prophet didn't know whether a Dajjal is going to appear during his lifetime or not. Indicating and signifying that he could, that it is this near, the matter is this close. So we need to be ready. We need to prepare. We need to learn our deen. We need to be, we need to earn the support of Allah Azza wa Jal by being on good terms with Allah Azza wa Jal by practicing and being committed to faith. Learn, read about the Dajjal. So you'll know, so if Allah decrees that He appears during your lifetime, you'll know what to look for, what to do, how to protect yourself.